one of the techniques that's useful when using keyframes to animate is to start out by designing what you want the end of your animation to look like. Um, a lot of times we start with one shape and then we um, we put keyframes farther down the timeline and then we turn the first shape into the second shape and that's kind of um, we're gonna work backwards from that. Instead we're gonna design the end product and we're gonna lock it in with keyframes so that that can't change and then we're gonna go back to the beginning of the timeline and make all kinds of changes to our end product and since we locked it in uh, down farther down the timeline when we do our tweens it will automatically uh, kind of run together to what we wanted it to be um, and that'll make it's hard to explain but it'll make more sense once we go here but I call this uh, animating from the end point so here's what I mean I'm gonna start by designing a background shape for um, for a project here so I'll pick a rectangle and I'm just gonna make a rectangle that's mostly the size of the of the stage here and then I want to make sure that this is aligned perfectly on the stage and to do that I'm gonna click this button here and I'll check the align to stage button and then I'll use uh, these buttons here to to line it up um, apply uh, align horizontal center and align vertical center the ones below it look just about the same but these are distribute and that means if you've got you know three objects and you click one of these it's gonna spread them out evenly on the stage and that's different uh, centering it would be this button and this button alright now I'm gonna create another rectangle uh, let me zoom out first and this rectangle needs to be a different color so um, it's gonna pick a obnoxious green here and it's gonna be tall and thin and I'm gonna use this since it's a shape and since this is a shape and since they're on the same layer I can use one to cut out the other so I'm gonna take this and drop it over here and then click away to deselect it and then I'll select the green bar again and move it off and you can see that left a cutout. now I've got two different shapes here um, I'm also gonna take this and use the transform tool and grab the corner and rotate it if I hold down shift it'll snap to 45 degree angles and then I will uh, move this here and click away to deselect and then reselect it uh, transform tool with Q and I'll uh, rotate it this way and move it down like this as long as it's still selected it's not gonna affect anything okay it's when you click away and deselect it that it ends up taking a chunk out below it okay I can delete that now okay so here's my background shape I've got one two three four separate shapes now and I want to animate these into this position <clears throat> so to do that these are each gonna to have to be on their own layer uh, a quick way to do that is to select them all they're all on layer one right now and I'm going to go to the modify menu and I'm gonna to go to timeline and I'm gonna choose distribute to layers shift Apple D is the shortcut okay now what you've got is uh, layer layer two is this one here on the left layer three is the middle section layer four is the bottom right and layer five is the top right so layer one now is empty so I'm gonna delete that by clicking on the trash can I'm gonna rename layer two I will call that left I'm gonna rename layer three we'll call it middle and then layer four is bottom and layer five is top <clears throat> all right now uh, I'm gonna animate this over two seconds right now I'm at 24 frames a second that means that 48 frames right here is um, is two seconds in so I'm gonna highlight all of those frames and I'm gonna hit F6 and I've inserted a keyframe on each one of those you can also do that individually just click each box and hit F6 <clears throat> all right what that means is now that these are keyframes here on uh, on frame 48 whatever's on frame 1 I can do whatever I want with it and if I do a shape tween it's eventually going to turn into this shape that you see right there so that's what I mean when I say animate from the end point this is my end point I want this to be the ending of my animation and so I can go back I designed it and I locked it in way down here on the timeline I can go back to the beginning and make whatever changes I want to here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the transform tool Q 
and I'm going to shrink this to the left. I'm going to take this one in the corner and uh, hold down shift to keep it in perspective and I'll shrink it up to the corner. And same thing with this one, I'll hold down shift and shrink it down to the right. If I don't hold down shift, it, it can get tall or, or wide. Shift forces it to stay in perspective. This one in the middle, I will uh, grab the corner of and hold down shift and option, which will force it to uh, scale down to the center point. Okay, and now if I were to tween these, they would grow into this position. But there's one more change I want to make first. This is an awkward starting point because I've got these shapes just kind of sitting here. I want to make those invisible so that they slowly fade in to 100% visible at the end. That'll look a little nicer. So to do that, I'm going to click on each one. I'm going to click on the color box. And actually, to see this, I'm going to have to slide my window over a little bit. But uh, in the color box here, let me select it. Looks like I changed the color accidentally. Let me fix that real quick. It was blue. OK. Oops, it was darker blue than that. Oh, boy. There we go. Okay, for the color, I'm going to click on that color, but over here there's the word alpha percentage, and it says 100. I'm going to click on that and change it to zero. And what that means is now my, um, my shape is actually invisible, and if I click away, it disappears. Okay, it's still there. It's just invisible right now. And since over here it's totally visible, the alpha is at 100%, that also will be tweened. So it will grow this way and it will fade in from nothing. Here's what it means. Here's what it'll look like. Create shape tween and you can see now it starts out invisible and it fades in to that. So I'll do that with each one. I'll click on that shape right there with my pointer tool, selection tool. And it's off stage a little bit, so I'm clicking on the alpha and changing it to 0%. Okay, same thing here. I'll click on that one and click on the alpha, change it to 0, and hit return. Click on this one, change the alpha to 0, and hit return. And I think, again, my mouse must have drifted. I think I changed the color on that one. We'll see when I create the tweens here. I did. I don't know how that happened. Okay, I'll click on that and we will There we go. Okay, so there it is. I animated from the end point. I started out by designing this, and then I locked it in at frame 48 with keyframes so that this part never changed. Then I can go back here, and it doesn't matter what I do. I can shrink things and reshape them or move them. They'll always end up back here because I locked it in with keyframes. Animating from the end point.